Well, now, let me just bust your bubble and tell you the truth. You see, the problem that we have nowadays in the society is we do not have people who are telling you the truth. Let me just tell you the truth. Do not even think about getting married if you're earning yourself 15,000. 15,000 for those who are not Kenyans. 15,000 Kenyan shillings, that's like uh, $100 a month. Let's talk of $100 or let's say $110. $110. You're earning this amount of money per month. And your years, your 23 years and below. <clears throat> and you're contemplating about getting a family. I mean, seriously, let me just tell you the truth. You see, the problem is that I've seen in Africa is when you find somebody at this particular... I mean, what on earth would 23 years old man thinking about getting married with this kind of a salary at the end of the month? In 2024's economy, where everything is tripling in terms of pricing. And people... See, we have some people even are complaining with 100k at the end of the month. And the guy is just having a single wife and... Uh, Maybe a kid or something of sort. You want to get those responsibilities on top of you? You see, the problem that most of the people make is that the moment you want to marry somebody or the moment you want to get into something called marriage, you only think about love. It's the only thing that you bank on. Hey, she loves me, he loves me, then we qualify to get married. No! Did you go beyond love and whatever? Did you consider the finances or the finance part of your life? And you know what? There's someone who will comment. And I dare you go check on the comment section. And as you go to check the comment section, also leave your comment. There is someone who will say, hey, I married mine when I was earning 5K a month and we are okay, we are rich. It is okay, but at what rate does that happen? <clears throat> you see, now, what you're trying to do is that, okay, it worked for you. Does it mean it would work for people? And for how many people is it working on that regard? Another thing that I see people talk about is that, hey, guess what, Joseph? See, marriage is God provides and all those kind of things you can do. Yes, you can, but you need to be smart. You need to have a strategy. You need to have a plan. I do not know why on Africa when you find people, they usually ride on something called hope. You ride on hope. And remember, thing I never forget this as long as you live. Hope is a good breakfast, but a poor dinner. What does it mean? It is good to start with hope, but never end with hope. It's good. It's good to be ambitious when you're starting, but not grow with it. And you find somebody are marrying on the basis of, hey, you're of age, you go get married. Hey, guess what? By virtue of you having a room, you're okay. By the way, in Africa, you find when somebody gets up, circumcised to some few years, you think like about getting married. You're barely getting by. Guess what? There's some of the box that you have to tick before getting married. For example, let's say here, uh, love, love box. Let's say you've ticked that love box. Let's say maybe something called uh, compatibility. Let's say you've ticked that box again. Let's say there is another box, something like, uh, uh, how, how do you call it? Maybe religion is a factor maybe to consider for your case. They've ticked that box. There is this box about finances. Finances. Have you ticked the box or have you swept the finances under the carpet by the virtue of you know loving somebody? I know some people even who overlook the religion part. I know some people who overlook things to do with the compatibility and such. By virtue of just being happy. You see, you sacrifice the entire stretch of your life on the basis of you love somebody and you have not put your finances in order. And guess what happens with you getting married and having all those responsibilities? For the God's sake, let's tell each other the truth. You get married. Obviously, you guys, you are young. You're going to get kids and such kind of a thing. So you bring forth innocent kids who knows nothing. You cannot even provide for that kid. And in that regard, then you start saying, hey, you know what? You cannot give your kid the quality education. You cannot even give them quality life and all those kind of things. Okay? Now, the point is this. It is always good to make sure that you put your finances in order. A 23-year-old individual, a 23-year-old individual, what you're supposed to be thinking when you have this amount of money, I would be I will actually go ahead and advise you, think about how you can grow yourself. How can you invest? How can you put your house in order? All right? How can you relate with people who are already done it in life? Okay? And instead of thinking, and the problem you find that most of the, these people who surely think about this kind of, a, there was someone who did text me and told me, hey, you know what, Joseph, I have a shop worth 300000 and I just want to marry. What is your advice? I told the guy, come on, how old are you? He told me, I'm 23 years old. Wow, you're lucky. At 23, you have a shop that you're operating that is over 300K. Uh, that is like $3,000. Three, three, $3, you know, the guy was like, yeah, I just want to marry. Then I, I was like, okay, fine, no problem then. Uh, why do you want to get married? Do you know the argument was? What do you, what do you want? Literally, that's how that guy texted me. What do you want me to do with $300,000? Three, 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 300,000 Kenyan shillings shop. I'm just by myself. So what do you think? What do I do with it? Who do I eat with? I mean, 
power, my goodness. That's a very, very, I don't want to call it ignorant, but it's kind of, maybe it's not ignorant. Maybe the guy does not understand what exactly he's talking about. At that point, can you imagine someone saying like, hey, what do you want me to do with that amount of money? I just want to get married. I just want to have somebody who can eat or we can eat with that amount of money. And you see, there is a big gap when it comes to understanding the civil or the, what do you call it the financial understanding you know the realities of life see when you have somebody who is telling you the realities of life and for the sake of parents if you're watching me and you have somebody who is about to marry and they're arguing on this perspective come on sit them down talk to them tell them see marriage thing comes with responsibilities coming with you making your wife happy you have to make sure that at least she eats she dresses she makes her hair she goes for an outing you go for an outing you have to progress. The kids are living okay. All those means money. You cannot, see, you cannot, you cannot replace the diapers. You cannot replace the diapers with love. That's a reality. It needs money. It requires cash. And then, guess what now happens? And this is why I want to explain to you and show you what are the dangers of you getting yourself into this now. This is it. And I want you guys to go with me step by step. And this channel, I always talk the truth. And I don't sugarcoat it. I say the way it is. Because I have seen it. And I know you people, you have seen it happening. See, the problem is that we bury our head into the sand and be like, hey, you know what, <laughs> let's, not, let's not just talk about it, Joseph, you know, it is what it is. It's not what it is. This is what it is, okay? Now, see, now, guess what happens? See, this person now marries. This, these are two individuals. Now, this is individual A and individual B. These guys want to get married, all right? This individual A says the man is earning that 110000 okay, $110 a month. See, and then there's a lady here. Probably they are jobless, all right, jobless. And they're what? They are maybe frustrated, frustrated. Or maybe, let's say, they are employed somewhere, and maybe the, the lady is earning less talk of maybe 8000 8000 a month. And now these two join hands. <clears throat> and obviously, and obviously in Africa, if you're watching this from the West, this may not apply to you. But in Africa, a man is supposed to wear the shoes of the marriage. In short, we say you're supposed to provide for everything in that specific marriage, irrespective of whether your wife who earns or does not earn. That's a reality. See, what happens, probably if you marry this lady, she's jobless, she's frustrated. You're also frustrated because uh, uh, 15000 at the end of the month, obviously, is a way less amount of money. Probably there's some of the things that you're struggling to put your house in order. All right? And then you bank on the basis of someone saying, like, hey, you know what? I'm going to head and marry because they say wife comes with the blessings. I'm going to be wealthy. I'm going to be rich. I am not ruling out all those factors. You can get somebody who is blessed and you can be blessed. And I'm not saying that that cannot happen. It can. But you see, you cannot play what we call, you cannot bank on, uh, see, this is like banking. It's like gambling. You cannot bank on bank gambling. So they go ahead and come together and they do what? They get themselves into bigger problems. So the reason why, maybe probably she comes from a poor background, come from a poor background the guy also comes from a poor background all right so she comes on board with the thinking of hey if one day i can get some cash i'll go ahead and build for my parents i'm gonna do this i'm gonna support them one two three and such the guy thinks the same so you guys you've not even settled where you come from before you do get into what we call the family that you create the family that you left still have some hooks attached have you ever seen not people who come who comes together and then what they are thinking is about building to their or building their parents houses and homes and such and i'm not saying it is bad but you see, if you have not achieved that from where you come from, even building what you guys have come together for, it is not even possible. You're going to get yourself into crisis. And guess what? Another mistake that I've seen people doing is this. You go get married to somebody, that person is not marrying you on the basis of love sometimes. They can fake it. They can configure themselves into your life because they are facing some frustration and discouragement outside there because of life. And... Uh, I know if you're coming from, you know, Western world, you may not understand what I'm talking about. There are some people who argue from the point of, hey, you know what? If you're a lady, you can just get married and be wealthy. There are people who argue like that. And that is very bad, especially in 2024, especially in 21st century. So you, these people, they, both of them, they have frustration. So guess what? They put all the two frustrations in one basket and that's where they are. And within the process, this person is, these people, probably somebody who is at 23 as a man, definitely going to marry somebody, let's say, at 20 or 21, around there. Guess what happens? These people, they are regarded as immature. That's a reality. Be it either uh, 
socially, especially socially, and biologically they may say, yeah, they may produce a, a young one, then they are old, they are matured, but socially, see, there is a difference between growing biologically and growing socially. Social is when you can be able to handle what you call the life pressures and such kind of a thing. So you bring these two individuals on board. These people, then they bring for the young one. So the guy does not even have an experience. The guy knows nothing about bringing young ones and all those kind of things. They have never even related with people who are married and know. See, you, you get what I'm saying? So these guys get into the frustrations. The frustrations here is not only the finances, but also the social aspect. And when you have a socioeconomic pressure, my friend, I am telling you it's going to be very tough with you or for you. That's a reality. So what I would advise you to do exactly at this particular level, focus. Well, you, may, you might be dating, but what I would advise you to do, guys, is put your house in order. See, manage that finances that you have. This guy at 23 earning this amount of money. Ask yourself, how can I make it at 20? How can I make it at 30? How can I double? How can I 10x this? So that at least by the time now you're clocking, and I always advise men to marry when they're above 30. True. I advise them. See, let, let me tell you one, one secret, ladies, and, 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 and carry this with you forever and ever. If you love your life and you would love to live in a life which is a decent, not only from the material perspective or whatever, from someone who is matured mentally, get somebody who is over 30, 30 years, who is a man. That's a reality. Just above 30. Simple. Someone has put his house in order. Everything is good. They have actually acquired a lot of experience in life and such kind of a things. But if you get somebody below that, I'm telling you it's going to be very tough and rough for you. Especially if you get such an individual. They are innocent. They do not know what they are doing, but the reality is, see, we say sometimes a certain age will hit, especially for ladies when they hit 25 years. At that time, they realize who they are. And they realize, oh my goodness, I just got married to this guy and we are not even rhyming in any one, one way or the other. That's not me. You, you just realize yourself all of a sudden and then you're contemplating divorces. Now, guess what has happened? The kids will suffer and all those kind of things. So the point should be, at all the occasion, at this particular point, focus on growing yourself. This is time to learn. You brother, even in, that cash should, should have, you know, sort of, Put it into marriage and what have you. Put it into education. Put it into learning. Put it into improving your life in terms of social skills. Putting it into learning in terms of the financial literacy. What is it? How do I need to manage myself? How can I invest? What are the areas to invest? What are businesses? What are the factors do I need to start a business? What businesses can I start? Where can I start? How do I run it? How do I groom? How do I handle the family? How do I handle the businesses? How do I put my house in order? In all those kind of things. Have I settled where I've come from? Are there some some people who need my support before I commit myself. Before, for example, let's say maybe you earn a certain amount of money, maybe more than this, and then maybe say your family members where you came from usually expect you sending them like two or three or five thousand or something of sort, and then all of a sudden you get married, then it becomes you know the the, 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 the the responsibilities on top of your table becomes more to a point now you deny that them that what you've been sending them. Guess what will happen? You're gonna get yourself into problems. All right? So it is good to make sure that you handle the, the, the where you came from so that by the time now you're putting some responsibilities on top of your head, you are okay. Guys, listen. Listen. When you want to get somebody on board as far as the marriages are concerned, please go over the love bond. Go to the finances. Agree on the finances. Know the character of that individual who you are marrying to. Are they holders? Are they spenders? Are they investors? Do they have consumer mindset? Where do they come from? What do they do with their money? Have they invested? Just understand them. For God's sake, right now as we speak, over 60% of the divorces that we have are contributed by finances. I know when you're in love, you cannot be advised. And I'm not advising you. Go ahead and consult your financial advisor. But the point is this, never ever forget this, that finances plays a very vital role as far as your life is concerned and as far as your marriage and anything is concerned. Whenever you live single or whether you live with people, the fact remains with this amount of salary, I know you may bank it on hope, I know you may bank it on whatever, but you need to be smart at the same time. Kwa Kiswahili or in Swahili we say a beboy hujikwaza. What does it mean? It simply means... As much as God will going to help you, also God needs somebody who is smart and someone who actually puts the house in order. Remember one thing, even God himself stops growth where there is no management.
That's what you're supposed to understand. This is an open discussion. It's a video that you may find like, hey, some people may agree, some may not agree with me. There's a reality, depends on where you read from. And I know there are some people who will text on the comment section and say, hey, I married mine when I was earning zero and all. There are those hopes that will be sold on you uh, from those uh, specific uh, comment sections. But it is you to make a decision that you know it's appropriate, rightful, and a decision that will not only you know uh, affect you, but also we still understand that it can affect maybe say your kids, your families, and all those kind of things. Let's be real, let's be factual, and that way we're going to grow and develop our lives and that's how we make a right decision. All right? By the way, guess what? I offer what we call the couple packages as far as the finances are concerned. And you can always contact me if you would like us to have a discussion about some money. Because that's, I realize some people are actually on wrangles because of the finances. Come on, don't do that, all right? If good Joseph is around, pick that number of mine on the description of this specific video. Let's have that session. We can do that Zoom. We can do that Google Meet video call. We can... Let's talk. See, you know what they say? When you stop talking, Guess what happens? We start fighting. Let's not do that, all right? Go pick that number of mine. Give me a call and let's talk about that thing. For now, it's a goodbye and see you in the next one.